everyone. I'm Nate Fulmer. I use he, him pronouns. I'm from Atlanta, Georgia. And y'all, <laughs> the South's where it's at. So a lot of people think that being a Southerner and being LGBTQ are mutually exclusive. Well, I'm a gay trans guy, and there's no place else I'd rather be. I was born in North Carolina, raised in Georgia, and I'm proud to call myself a Southerner. Because besides the fantastic food, fried okra is the bomb. Yeah, yeah. The South is bursting with diversity. 35% of our nation's LGBTQ population lives in the South, and 41% of Southerners are people of color. That's why the South is where I'll stay. Not everyone can move to the North or to the coastal cities, and the LGBTQ population in the South needs taken care of. We have the, yes, yeah, yeah. We have the highest rate of new HIV di diagnoses and yet the lowest HIV survival rate. So that's why 15 years from now, you'll find me working to make healthcare in the South inclusive of all communities, trying to make, <laughs> Absolutely. Trying to make Atlanta as much a mecca for LGBTQ people as Los Angeles, New York, or San Francisco. Because we all deserve to be safe and included in our schools and communities. Yes, yes. And speaking of creating safe and inclusive communities, I'd love to give the mic to a tremendous advocate and supporter Greg Berlanti. Um, thanks, thank you, Nate. This is always the most inspiring uh, event for me of the year. I just think it's uh, incredible to see so much courage displayed in young people. You guys really are the best, uh, the best in us and who, and, and you represent the best of who and what we are uh, as people and as a nation. So I'm really grateful to all the kids here tonight. I'm grateful for Keenan and Kyler, who jumped at the chance to be here, uh, and for their bravery and courage as performers and as people this year. So thank you very much. It means a lot to a lot of kids. And finally, uh, it's an honor to be able to present the Visionary Award tonight. Uh, it's been a dream to work with DC, a company that continues to be a pioneer in diverse casting, LGBTQ representation in comics and television, and of course, breaking the summer box office mold this summer with Wonder Woman. I appreciate all that Glisten does to make schools safe and an inclusive space for young people no matter their sexual orientation, gender identity, or gender expression. Since my days working on Dawson's Creek, I've been lucky to be a part of TV that is relevant and pushes boundaries. Let's hear it for Dawson's. <laughs> From gay and trans storylines to abortion stories to AIDS, my fellow writers and I have tried to represent real stories for young people. I believe it is the responsibility of those of us fortunate enough to work in this industry to do what we can, and there are a few partners that understand this as much as Diane Nelson, Jeff Johns, and DC Entertainment. The Visionary Award is annually presented to entertainment executives who look toward the future instead of the industry's past. And in the last several years, DC Entertainment has raised the bar in celebrating diversity and promoting equality. From the creation of Batwoman as the first lesbian superhero as a comic lead, to Alicia Yo as the first trans character, to the reboot of the gay superhero Midnighter, to co-publishing the comic Love is Love to support the victims of Pulse, in the nightclub shooting, DC continues to develop diverse characters that can all be embraced by all audiences. Shows like Supergirl, Arrow, DC's Legends of Tomorrow, and Gotham have allowed millions of young people across the country to see themselves represented in mainstream media. And as far as we've come, DC has made it their priority to continue pushing the entire industry to consider what more we can do. I appreciate the opportunity to present my friend Diane Nelson, president of DC Entertainment and president of Warner Brothers Consumer Products with this year's Visionary Award. Ha, ha, ha.
<laughs> best table in the house. Um, I, I have to say, this is a remarkable night. I, I didn't expect to feel, I was gonna just start out by saying, let's have Bruce back up here, right? Say the same thing, I mean, what a moving story. And then to hear from Kyler's mother, I'm a th mother of a 13 year old and an 18 year old, two boys, and uh, crying through that conversation. And then to hear from students um, who are, are more articulate and confident than I would ever hope to be in my lifetime. It's just truly a remarkable thing. I, I asked my friend and partner, Greg Berlanti, to stay up here tonight uh, because what DC is accepting is very much a result of, of his work. So I'm gonna start with, I am Diane Nelson. I use she, her pro pronouns. And I and all of us at DC Entertainment accept this award with great appreciation and respect. I don't have enough opportunity to highlight how much of DC Entertainment's success creatively, commercially, and ideologically is a result of this man's love for our characters and the deep talent he has for bringing them to life. The last seven years have been a renaissance for DC and its characters in popular culture, and it began and continues in large part due to Greg and his team, many of whom are here. Their passion, yeah, thank you, Andrew. Their passion for telling great stories that f reflect real people, and superheroes are in many cases real people. It began with Arrow, and it's grown to be dominant as the voice of DC in television with Flash, Supergirl, DC's Legends of Tomorrow, and the upcoming Black Lightning and Titans. Together with Warner Brothers Television and Jeff Johns and his team at DC, these characters have been intru introduced to an incredibly wide audience and an existing fan base that can't quite believe their good luck to be alive at this point in time when these characters are everywhere in such a great way. <clears throat> Aside from our pride and appreciation of what Greg has done for DC, it also illustrates the amazing power that our characters have in reinforcing important messages to an enormous group of people. There is both responsibility and huge opportunity in this power, and I and everyone at DC, from my amazing executive team, all of whom are here tonight, to the hundreds of artists and writers who bring our characters to life in publishing every week, we love and understand the impact we can have on the world through great storytelling. Anyone who knows me personally knows there's not much I abhor more than bullying in any form, any environment. Bullying the vulnerable almost always comes from insecurity and ignorance, a lack of empathy that begins with a lack of knowledge and sensitivity. It's always at the root of the behavior of a bully. So when our friend, Chip Sullivan, told me about Glistens, yes, huge hero. When Chip told me about Glistens several years ago, it hit home for me. What an incredible organization. Middle school and high school years are hard enough without having to battle the discovery and the either self or public acknowledgement of issues like sexual orientation gender identity and gender expression. To face this while being alienated or harassed by those around you who don't understand what it means or what it's like to confront such complicated issues of self-identity, it has to be incredibly frightening and isolating. Although I'm given great hope by what I've heard tonight and who I've seen. And to know that GLSEN is there to provide the support, information, and resources, not only to the students in our schools, but to the adults around them who are supporting them, that's real heroes work. So that brings me back to the power of DC and its characters. Whether it's projects like Mark Andreco's Love is Love, as Greg mentioned, which help benefit victims of a horribly bigoted <laughs> act of hatred and violence at the Pulse nightclub in Florida, or the great authentic stories being told by one of our writers, Marguerite Bennett, in the pages of Batwoman. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we can eradicate ignorance and slowly make gains on enlightenment, understanding, and empathy by showing real characters organically and authentically featured in excellent storytelling that reaches millions of people now. Slowly but surely, we can create change through awareness. 
Understanding and acceptance must come when we stop thinking of how we're different from one another and spend more time understanding how much we all share in life, in feelings, in insecurities, love, and fears. When it stops being controversial or even newsworthy to feature an LGBTQ character in great entertainment, we will have made strides towards understanding. When Greg Berlanti chooses to ensure that his shows feature characters of diversity of all kinds, he's working to normalize what should already be normal, accepted and understood. It's for this reason, the power of DC's characters to affect change for the good that I so happily accept this award. Everyone at DC, along with the talent with whom we work, are committed to using this power to both entertain and inform. It's a great privilege, and it's on behalf of all of those people that I thank you for the recognition of the Visionary Award for DC. And we applaud, really applaud, and thank all of you who show the courage every day to support those in the LGBT community who are struggling in ways no one should have to. So thank you very, very much. Thank you.